Now, as it happens, max min problems often come with constraints based on real world considerations. Many times you get a solution and you rule it out because it's not physical. Now, what that actually means depends on the, the domain in which you're working. Maybe it's something from physics, maybe it's something from biology, maybe it's something from economics. You only have a finite amount of money to spend on these commodities. No matter what the application domain is, you know that it's common to have a constraint where you have to uh, take into consideration certain bounds. So what you need to remember is that to get a global maximum or minimum in a problem, you need to pay attention to all of the local critical points that you find and you have to check the boundaries. You probably remember your single variable calculus teacher yelling at you about this, how you've got to check. Let's see an example where this happens. Let's say that you've got a variable, uh, let's say x, and the bounds, the constraints are that x has to be less than two in absolute value. Then, if you're given a function f of x equals x cubed minus 2x squared plus x minus 4, you want to maximize that function. You know what to do. I know what to do. Differentiate. f prime is 3x squared minus 4x plus 1. Set that equal to 0. Now, we can factor that really easily into 3x minus 1 and x minus 1. Solving for zero gives us values of x equal to one third or x equals positive one. There we go. Some very nice critical points. We can classify them through the second derivative. F double prime is six x minus four. When we evaluate that at one third, what do we get? We get negative two. When we evaluate that at x equals one, then clearly we get positive two. Now I remember negative second derivative, that's a maximum. Positive second derivative, that's a minimum. Our goal was to maximize, so it looks like x equals one third is it. Nice, simple, but we still have to check the endpoints. Don't forget the boundaries. These endpoints are critical. Now at x equals two, we get a value of f that is negative 22, but, but at x equals positive two, we get a value of f that is negative two. How does that compare to the other critical points we saw? Well, if we look at x equals one third, then f evaluated there is, is less than negative two, whereas f at one is equal to negative four. So what we see in the end is that the maximum value is not at one of those interior critical points that we found, but rather it's on one of the boundary endpoints. Always check the boundaries.